right, babies, it's that time again. Oh, yeah. The holiness of Jesus is all around. Oh, yeah, baby. of imagination. Oh yeah. On one hand, it's that very essence of life because it's out of the imagination that creations of beauty emerge. It's also the place where disaster, where disaster uh, festers and grows. So, in that last sense, I think that's what Paul was after in Romans when he said, uh, or no, it's in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians. that we cast down imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Oh yeah, baby. And that's where like literalism it gets to be a problem. If not, it's just inherently a problem. Well, actually, no, that, that's another paradox, really, because we want to take God at his word, right? And we don't want to um, twist it to meet our own needs. But we can't, just because in that one verse... It speaks of casting down imaginations. We can't then assume all imagination is bad, right? Because then, you know, where does that leave a John Coltrane solo? <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. So, yeah, in both cases, Paradox is everywhere. And if you're not familiar with what that means, it's what appear to be opposing views actually have a common shared aspect that is essential for conceiving of the depth of God. Because God's, you know, I should say depths. Because God, the more you get to know God, and there's deeper and deeper understandings. And very seldom do they inform us by just being literal. much of the God's word is intended to spark our imagination and 
get us to paint our gospel on the world again. So I just want to encourage you to do that and don't lose heart when things in the natural don't align the way you would like them. Again, there's another paradox for you. You would think, well, things aren't lining up, so I must be doing something wrong. No. God is always building in you that creative and constructive energy for you to discover being a co-creator with him. So all challenges can be used toward that end. I'm not saying God sent it. I'm saying all your needs are found in God. And seeing as what he's building are eternal characteristics and values shouldn't be surprised like Paul says when we enter various trials oh yeah baby in fact I would say the opposite there's your paradox baby if you're not facing any trials I'd be concerned something's wrong you're oblivious to your own needs. Because there's got to be something that God is challenging you with for you to go beyond what you're accustomed to accepting. And As you're reading scholarly interpretations of the Bible, just be on guard. Again, paradoxes abound. Some of it is useful and essential, and some of it is completely speculative and um, questionable. So you have to rest where the Spirit of God is, where true knowledge resides. And this will be a paradox for people because the atheists and the doubters out there are going to be looking for evidence. And so when they hear us talk about the Spirit being knowledge, they're going to be like, well, where's your evidence, baby? And this is where the natural man can't discern spiritual things. These are internal, eternal qualities and events that are not impossible to observe, but require unique tools those unique tools being the mind and spirit of Christ. So there you have it, baby. God is ever ready to teach us when we take the time to stop what we're doing and submit to him and give him the floor let him wipe it 
with us. Oh yeah, baby. He'll clean out what is uniquely us and he will exponentially develop what we share with him. <laughs>